Okay, uh, Ricky Clark here mm -hmm. in St. Petersburg. Mm -hmm. uh, can you explain uh, what kind of uh, sound devices or just chains between sound devices mm -hmm. are you using? Uh, yeah. How it sounds? Uh -huh. Yeah, so um, I'm sort of interested in DIY technologies and m making your own instruments, whether they're interfaces or sound objects as well. Um, so here I've got um, a sound sculpture that I made a couple of years ago, which is made out of stainless steel. Um, it's a little bit rusty now. Um, and I use a contact microphone here um, to kind of record the sounds of the vibration. So I use a beta, um, sometimes different attenuators, and then the contact mic goes into an effects chain. Um, so here I'm using um, an octave pedal to kind of get those really low sounds. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also going through some reverbs, a bit of space echo, and kind of using the effects pedals to kind of bring out the qualities of the material. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the, the first first type, and I have a few larger ones at home that I use as well. <laughs> um, so other kind of sound um, generators, I use this Coma Field Kit here, which is an, an, an electroacoustic workstation. So it means, again, you can play with objects and kind of mic those up. Mm -hmm. um, and here I use this in most of the performances because I like to play with radio as well. So we can sequence the radio, um, which I like to do because it gives it a distinct feel to that place. Um, and that goes into Ableton Live. So I have other field recordings that I'm working with in Ableton Live. Um, yeah, and then this is a, an interface that I've made here, which is um, kind of a MIDI controller. This is like a graphene interface. So each of these modules is a conductive module, so it has graphene in. Um, and then I map these modules via an Arduino mm -hmm. to Ableton Live, okay. so I can control different parameters like frequency or sound and or, velocity or yeah any anything you like so you can map it so mm -hmm. it's um, a variable voltage so you kind of map with proximity with your hand mm -hmm. um, it's very flexible it's very flexible yeah you can make it do whatever you want it to do and because i like the idea of things being more gestural when mm -hmm. you perform as well um so yeah just a kind of experiments really to see how you can work with electronic music okay. and field recording mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, other things, so then I have other kind of like pro equipment, um, so I use different synths, um, whether recordings from home or kind of live synthesizers, and then I like to kind of get different objects that I find from the places that I go to. So this is an object that I found on the flea market yesterday in St. Petersburg. Um, I liked it because it's a 303, like mm -hmm. a Russian 303. Yeah. Um, and the legendary. The legendary 303, and what I liked about it was that it just made a sound, so I turned it on at the flea market. It has an aerial, but it mm -hmm. just made a nice white noise sound. So I used some of those textures in our collaboration this evening, um, just with some filters and um, some granulators, mm -hmm. um, just kind of yeah, bringing those like textures and noises out of kind of like old technologies, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's pretty much the set, really. Uh, there's a lot going on in the computer, but I'm trying to sort of break out of the computer and. I think the thing that's quite difficult is there's quite wild frequencies, it's mm -hmm. quite hard to tame, so doing the live performance is, is part of the process, it's kind of part of the experiment, so things go wrong mm -hmm. and that's good, because then you learn each time. Um, yeah, I think that's... Oh, the last thing is, um, so tapes as well, I work a lot with tape. Um, also very vintage, is it, is it just This is a really, yeah, so this is like a classic Sony um, tape recorder and it's got a speed control oh, okay. so you can vary wow. the pitch. Um, but I quite like that so you can so kind of pitch bend, mm -hmm. it's really good. And I use these tapes, so these are old, um, these are my dad's Open University mm -hmm. tapes. So this is, do you know Open University? Well, what that is okay. so it's start, Can explain? yeah so the open university started in the 1970s in england and it's a university that exists outside <laughs> of like um the red brick official universities so you can learn from home so before the internet oh, okay. it's like learning remotely like doing an online course before the internet existed so you'd get these tapes sent out to you in the post so my dad did um th this is like a science foundation course about crystal patterns and what's it? The language of waves. Yeah. <laughs> so these are kind of science tapes that send you in the post mm -hmm. with kind of experiments for you to do. So I kind of quite like using those old educational voices. Yeah, I heard it in your life. Like, uh, just the piece of from this cassette. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I like to sort of bring those like educational mm -hmm. things in. Um, yeah.
<laughs> okay. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, coming here and uh, uh, see you next time, I think. Yeah, also thanks very much for inviting me. Thank you.